is here. We have Gary Bastchuk who is here and, and Ricky Chan on the mining side and Lisa Davis and others. And we can all talk about, you know, the, the for those who understand the format, we can all talk about deltas and the, 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 the pricing metrics that, that are now sort of uncertain. Um, this is the disclaimer. We're, we're not going to move forward until everybody puts their hand up and says they've read the disclaimer. Has anybody actually ever read a disclaimer? All right, next. So um, uh, one slide of uh, Pear Tree Propaganda. We were founded in, I, I founded the company in 2007. The genesis of the firm was the change in tax law. Um, it's, uh, we've now moved forward over the past 16, 17, 18 years to a point where we've got over 40 people in the firm. We're doing 60, 65 transactions a year. Um, and we're north of $500 million in every year. Um, it's not a um, coincidence that we, together with our competitors in the donation space, um, are, the, are the primary sponsors here today. We've been supporting Red Cloud for a long time. But um, uh, the, the, the reason for the, uh, that, that, that we have been all successful in, in, the, uh, in, in the donation arrangement, just so that you understand it, is that in the donation arrangement, those who have no interest in buying flow-through shares uh, and investing in the sector will buy the shares simply for their tax value. Those shares are immediately donated and then sold to institutional investors stripped of tax value at which point they're merely a common share and they can be sold anywhere in the world. Um, you know, in, in 2022, with the change in the law to allow for the uh, critical mineral exploration tax credit, you know, w within 30 days of that, of that announcement in budget 2023, um, we uh, had done our first deal and then in the, subsequent, in the rest of the year we did over $200 million um, in the 12 months following the, the change in the law. And virtually all of it was done with end buyers uh, who are institutional in Australia. So the Australians are funding our critical mineral um, uh, activity. That said, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a reason why retail investors are, are not interested in our sector. Um, if you look at all the other exchanges in the world, even if you look at the TSX, if you look at the NASDAQ and whatever, and if you look at the last 10 years, you know, most exchanges have shown, you know, 8 to 14 percent returns. Um, anybody want to guess what the, what the TSX Venture, the home of the juniors, has shown in the last 10 years? I'm not going to wait for it. It's, we're down 65 percent over 10 years. A, a, a flow-through investment in um, 10 years ago where the share was bought for a thousand, you know, where your shares were bought at a thousand dollars, today is likely worth $350, maybe. And then when you sell those shares, because you got a deduction up front, you have to pay a capital gains inclusion now on that share um, at two thirds. So, you know, the, the fact that this format um, bifurcated or split the tax value from the underlying equity has allowed for the financing um, uh, in, in Canada to continue. Otherwise, I'm not sure where we'd be. Um, so we're just gonna look at what the flow through market looks like. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the legislative uncertainty. Um, for those of you who have got a meeting and, and are otherwise, um, you, know, it, it, you know, talking to money, um, just the very bottom line very quickly is if you understand the, the delta discussion, the difference between this, the premium to market and the discount in order to sell the shares um, at a, 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 at a, to, a, to a buyer stripped of that tax value, um, if, if you know your numbers from last year, just assume that those, that spread has been reduced due to the uncertainty by 10 to 15 percent, depending on province. If you just take that away, you can just, you know, finish breakfast and leave and you don't have to hear the rest of it. Um, so this is the, the general market um, in Canada. You'll, you'll see there's a, uh, the first half of 2024, there's a number there of $735 million. That's a little skewed because there were a couple of very large CDE offerings, development offerings. So the real CEE number is around 600 million, and it's further, um, it's 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 also further skewed somewhat by the fact that in the in the uh, the, the federal government, obviously everybody in this room knows that the federal government increased the capital gains inclusion rate from 50 percent to 66 and two thirds, effective on on uh, June 25. And a lot of the transactions that would have been done that you would have done now, if you could have financed uh, prior to June, you would have. And so there was an acceleration of a lot of deal flow um, from uh, uh, that, that otherwise would be would be done, you know, post uh, 
um, post Beaver Creek, et cetera. So, so those are the numbers. But then when we look at how much of it is done by the in the in the by the by the donation arrangement, um, you'll find that it's like 85 percent of the of the flow through is done by in, in this format of which we're you know more than more than well, we're well above we're about 60 percent of all of that. Um, th these slides, by the way, are available uh, probably on our website sometime soon. So if if you want them, you can you can get them. Um, so the, the the problem we have with flow through as well in this format is that there's a concentration exposure. There are very few people buying flow through, and one of the things that uh, and I just want to see if what this slide. Okay, I'm going to come back to this slide. Just use it. So one of the problems we have is w in that concentration, we have a, a, a set of rules in Canada going back to 1987. Uh, it was adopted from the U.S. called AMT or Alternative Minimum Tax. Does any, who here actually, no shame here, who here understands AMT? Anybody? Come on, Lisa, you can put your hand up. Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so here is a very simple, the primer. It'll take me a minute and a half. There, there was a time before 1987 that if I made a million dollars a year, I could buy a million dollars of flow through and not pay the government of Canada any tax at all. So the government of Canada came along and said, you know, we have cash flow needs as well. And the guy named Stanley Hart brought this to us as the deputy minister of finance in 87. And he decided, they, they, they brought in this legislation that said, complete your T1 return, your regular tax return, including all the deductions and credits that you're otherwise entitled to, and then do a second return, backing out some of those deductions and credits, including things like carrying costs on real estate and flow-through share deductions, and see if you come up with a number. So if in the regular return, recognizing all the legitimate deductions and credits, you, ha you owe the government of Canada, say, $100,000 in tax, and you do your AMT return, and you owe the government $120,000 because you couldn't recognize all those expenses, you write a check for $120,000, and then, you, and, and then you get a credit for that $20,000 against for seven years, and it expires in seven years, against taxes otherwise owing as you carry it forward. The problem with that for our sector is that the biggest subscribers, the largest subscribers for flow-through shares are those who have had a one-time-in-their-lives event. They've sold the building, they've sold the property, they've gone public where somebody says it's time to give back $10 million to the local hospital, and when you do the AMT calculation, they could have bought $3 million of flow-through, but under the new AMT rules that they brought in starting in, uh, 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 announced last year and brought in effective January the 1 of this year, they could only buy $2 million. And so the concentration limit that we have in Canada is uh, through the AMT rules, uh, our, our uh, limit the amount of flow through that, w that, that we could have bought, um, uh, reducing it by about a third from last year. So we have a small group of people who buy most of the flow through in Canada, and that's us and everybody else, um, made worse by the fact that we have an AMT calculation that, uh, that, that reduces the ability to use the deductions and credits, uh, including the, the critical mineral exploration tax credit uh, when, when there are major life events. <laughs> So living in a time of legislative uncertainty, um, two things have happened this year. On top of the AMT change, we all know there was a capital gains inclusion rate increase, um, effective June the 25th. Recognize that when you buy a flow, when you buy a thousand dollars of flow through, um, uh, you get to write off the thousand dollars. And then you, but for tax purposes, if you've ever bought into a limited partnership, it behaves like a limited partnership unit. You took the deduction, and for tax purposes, it's as if you paid zero. And the result of that is that even if you sell at a loss, or in our case, when we, when we sell to an end buyer, you're still going to recognize a capital gain. So if before you bought at $1,000 and you ended up, you know, and it didn't work out for you, so you sold for $300, for $300, you brought $150 into income. Now you're bringing, of the, of the $300, you're bringing $200 into income and you're paying tax on that. This is not good for us. Um, and so what does it mean for exploration? We've already talked about it and we've already talked about what the AMT calc is. But you can see that concentration exposure for our sector. 
Um, what we started doing um, last year, and anybody who goes to our website, you'll see a series of webinars. And for our little, um, you know, we, we typically will run a, a webinar where we'll have 150 people log on. On the AMT and the capital gains inclusion rate, we were running seven and 800 people. Um, so there's a lot of interest. Uh, finance finally started listening uh, to us um, in, in the spring of this year, where we, because we had all the historical data, we were able to say to finance, you're about to lose $300 million of exploration financing in Canada. Um, we all knew, at least even though we helped write some of the other submissions about capital gains changes, we all knew that Christia Friedland was not going to titrate, our sense was that she was not going to titrate or change capital gains inclusion rates um, if by sector, so we focused entirely on this AMT, um, the AMT changes that were, that, that are already implemented in law. Um, and thankfully, the Department of Finance um, finally did buy into that submission. And if you, <clears throat> if, uh, and, and on August the 12th of this year, draft legislation was introduced, has not been passed yet. It may not pass if the government falls. That, that, that basically backs out Canadian exploration expense from the AMT calculation. If that actually becomes law, and we don't know, it ought to become law. If the Conservatives were to come to power, I think they will, they, they, we know that they will bring that part of the legislation into, into uh, that they will pass that legislation. It might actually get passed, in which case that spread between the subscription amount and the end price will then shrink and it'll be to the, the sector will be better off. Um, we don't know at this point what the impact of AMT is. And for us, when a client calls and says, I'd like to donate um, $100,000, how much flow through do I need to buy? Um, and how much AMT exposure? Be, in 2023, in order to donate $100,000 by buying flow through, the subscriber needed about $1.1 million of regular income. That's a huge number, concentration exposure to this sector. Under the new rules that are currently in law, you need a million seven. If they pass the legislation that was uh, published on August the 12th, that will come back down to about a million two, so we can live with it. So we just don't know, and when you call Gary or Ricky or Lisa to say, you know, what is that delta? It varies from province, um, but generally across the board, just assume that the delta will be reduced without getting into granular discussion here uh, by about 10 to 15 percent. Um, one of the other um, uh, issues we have is with respect to corporate subscription uh, for flow through shares. You know, the CDE market um, was largely funded by um, corporate buyers, CCPCs, private companies. Unfortunately, the capital gains inclusion rate starts at zero uh, for the higher rate uh, for, for companies. And that uh, spread for, ex for development shares has shrunk from about a 125 delta. In other words, we could buy at $1.25 and sell at a dollar. CDE is a, is, has to be amortized over, you know, at, at uh, basically 30% a year declining. So there's less value. But that said, we used to be able to make the deal work at about a 123 to 125. We buy at a dollar 25, say, and sell at a dollar, donate and sell at a dollar. That number is now about 115, and I don't think that's going to change much. And that's for those who are further along in your development and you're actually looking at CDE shares. It's better than you know issuing common shares at a discount, um, but not as uh, not not as um, tax efficient or or beneficial to the sector. Uh, as it was prior to the inclusion rate increase if it passes. Um, we've already talked about the AMT changes. Um, they, they, part of, I mean, when, when uh, this is not an, an anti-liberal, well, maybe it is, uh, commentary, but, you know, one of the things they, they included in this AMT change last year was that even if you were impoverishing yourself, giving away money, Right? They said you had to pay, uh, you, you couldn't take your, you, you, you couldn't take half of your donation receipt. I mean, that's ridiculous. Anyway, we showed numbers uh, that convinced them that was a mistake and they backed out the donation receipt problem. Uh, they, they saved face by saying you can use 80% of your donation receipt. Um, makes no sense. 
Um, we've already talked about CDE and CEE. Um, you know, the, the problem going back to corporate buying for exploration is up until the end of last year, we had a floor, basically we had a floor for, for CEE, for exploration expenses, of around a one, four, call it a 140 delta, maybe maybe a little less, maybe 138. In other words, we could buy at $1.38 and sell at a dollar, and those shares were bought by corporations. That no longer exists. So we've lost about 200 million ourselves. The, the sector has likely lost what otherwise probably a couple hundred million dollars of subscribers simply because of that change in the law, assuming it gets passed and the government remains in place. And that's the team. The team is largely here today. Uh, Kendra Johnson, for those of you who are headquartered in uh, Vancouver, um, you likely know Kendra. She joined us almost a couple, almost two years ago. And um, if you have any questions on any of these things and you're in Vancouver, um, you know, our, we are a tax shelter promoter and under the tax shelter rules in the Income Tax Act, we always buy lunch. And so, and that's the presentation. I thought we'd just open it up for questions and uh, because there are often specific questions related to this stuff. And we got lots of people in the room who can answer them. Any questions anywhere? In which case we're done and you can go back to your meetings and hopefully raise some money. Yes, sir. Okay, so the question is, the, 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 for a subscriber for flow through that funds the, that, that, that then gets donated and sold is the threshold about a $250,000 of income? Yeah, so generally that's at the sort of the, the, the bottom end where you're, where you're able to give away, you know, we are able to give away thirty dollars or $40,000. Even then it's a bit challenging. You may have to carry forward some of those deductions and credits. But if, if you're asking the distribution of, of, of assets amongst our client base, the, the typical client, um, at least our client, and that represents more than half of the, of the market, uh, will buy, will don we'll donate $100,000 a year um, in the format because there are shares that are bought at a high price and then donated and sold. Um, the, the amount of flow through they typically buy the average subscriber is about two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars of subscription, um, and that person has to be earning, you know, generally a million and a quarter a year. So it's not necessarily how much they how much they own; it's how much they earn. So C-suite executives are great examples. Retiring executives are a sweet spot, but there we've done lots of retiring executives where 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 there's a there's a bump in the income. That's where AMT kills the, the deal because before they would have given away, they would have bought, <clears throat> again, they, they might have bought, I mean, I'm thinking of one individual from, who retired from a bank a couple of years ago, and he or she um, uh, gave away about $3 million, and on today's rules, it would be $2 million, and that means that there would have been a third lesson flow through as well. I don't know if that... How much... I'm not sure that the asset base is actually, we, we see clients who are, um, who are high earners but don't have a lot of assets, um, but have a, a, a culture of donation and so they buy flow through to, to, to like any other commodity. If something is cheaper, uh, you buy more. If you're generous and taxable, you give more and you give more often. So I'm not sure that there's a tie to the assets. We have, you know, we, when I started the business, I thought that the sweet spot was going to be the, you know, the people whose names are on buildings. And all of those folks generally are very well structured. Um, uh, we know clients who will earn $10 million a year, <clears throat> excuse me, and give away, say, uh, a million and a half a year with us. But they're giving away 10 million, but they're, but they're also, they have other income from Barbados where they're globally headquartered, and there's lots of those folks out, you know, in Canada. And in those situations, they maybe give away 20 million a year, and they're giving it away with 100 cent dollars, and which is which is remarkable. Our typical client is probably worth the older client that represents, you know, the owner manager that probably represents 70, 65 percent of our book, 
probably has a family, it's the next group down with family net worth from a business of you know, 70 to $80 million. I don't know if that's helpful. I'm curious as to why that's, inter that's of interest to you. Anyone else? No? In which case, I, th in which case I think the, the presentation is over. Um, I'd like to extend our sort of appreciation to the folks at Red Cloud for putting all this together. It's amazing. You know, I, you know, if you, I know that Lisa was on the, uh, was on the, on the, on the board of Lisa Davis, who's here. Put your hand up. Anyway, she was on the board of PDAC for six years and uh, co-chaired the Finance and Taxation Committee for five of those years. And I know that she was always talking about how, you know, the challenges of putting together a large group such as this. Um, and, and, um, and so, you know, I think you're to be, you know, I see Bruce is there and Bruce and your team should be commended for a, another stellar year. Thank you so much for including us.